So thank you everybody for joining this meeting today. My, my name is Sandra Borghi and I will present you uh, one of the parts of my PhD thesis which is the, the Stochastic Car Simulator now the SKS. Um, first of all, maybe Wayne, do you want to, to remember how to use the, the, the WebEx during the conference? Sure, I'll add a few comments. So we have all the microphones muted just to prevent feedback. Um, if this is your first time using WebEx, there's a chat feature that's available at the top of the toolbar. Uh, feel free to uh, send a question. If possible, please leave the questions till the end. We'll have a few minutes. Um, if we're unable to answer your questions, you can email us uh, at the address shown on the screen there. And we'll also record the session and make this available for download in the next few days in case uh, you want colleagues to take a look at it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So my the, the developed methodology aims to simulate karst um, karst aquifers. The the only kind of karst aquifer it will uh, it will be suitable for are epigenetic karst. So epigenetic karst are those that form from um, infiltration of rainfall water along uh, and which dissolute along the, the bedding planes and fractures so uh, along, along the discontinuities in limestone matrix it will form this by enlargement by chemical enlargement it will form all these uh, karstic feature known as conduit or also some caves and this is the so this is the conceptual model uh, on which is based my uh, my uh, stochastic uh, simulator. So we will have some inlet points that are uh, punctual infiltration points, which make uh, karst aquifer more vulnerable, vulnerable, and also point outlets. And the uh, the aim of the methodology is to take into account of uh, geological constraints. So, for example, uh, aqu different aquitard where you cannot put. Uh, conduits like this, but uh, and, and then also the, the fracturation and all the initial discontinuities that will be included into the model to add realism and uh, to to guide the um, the generation of the the cast conduits. Um, this is a, this is a, sorry. Karst conduits can have a lot of problem in, for example, in geotechnics or also in uh, environmental application. The, the figures shown here are just a, a couple of examples. What you can have uh, in tunnel, for example, when uh, drilling a tunnel, you can have a great uh, amount of water coming into the, so uh, inflow water coming into the, the tunnel, or you can have fulfillment, so huge caves fulfilled with uh, sediments which takes uh, a lot of uh, stability problems. Or uh, like here in the, the city of uh, La chaux de here, here in Switzerland, where you have a, a lot of, uh, uh, yeah, it happens quite often that uh, some small inlets like that uh, open directly into the road. And, uh, or you can have huge caves. This is a, a tunnel uh, here near to Neuchâtel. And there were, they encountered, while, while drilling the, the tunnel, they encountered this huge cave and they had to protect the the tunnel with a sort of roof from the from the cave or you can have also some environmental problems in this case it's the it's a, a lake that is depleting now here in Switzerland because of uh, of the a tunnel bore which is now draining all the water of this uh, of this um, of this lake so these are just a, a couple of examples to 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 have a conceptual model and also a conceptual presentation of the problem that can we can have with with karst aquifer. Now uh, the need is uh, to develop a methodology, a modeling methodology that will uh, allow to estimate and also to quantify the uncertainty associated with karst feature, um, especially with conduits so the, and the connectivity so the uh, of the network because these conduits are really uh, preferential flow and transport paths. So this methodology uh, is uh, consistent with geological observation and also with field measurement. This is uh, especially uh, um, important uh, for the large scale, large scale structures. It will be consistent with the conceptual model about uh, the spelogenesis, uh, the one I've uh, shown right before in the, in the introduction. It has a, st a stochastic base, so this will allow to perform uncertainty analysis or also a risk assessment. 
Um, it is a, a prototype, but it is uh, reasonably fast, so you can have uh, you can generate several different uh, different uh, realization of cast, uh, but quite uh, fast. So it takes a couple of minutes, depending on the depending on the resolution, and uh, it is quite easy to test several uh, hypotheses about the cast uh, feature, like I, I will show in, later in the examples. This is the the full methodology I have developed in my PhD. Uh, so today I will speak only about this part, so the, the conduit generation, but the full methodology needs first to build a geological model and also a fracture model and all the discontinuity. These will be used as base for the cast conduits model. And then you will, uh, and I will show also a couple of, uh, of slides about this, about uh, the discretization of the model and then how it can be used for physical simulation. Uh, I, will, uh, I will show in this presentation how to import the cast model into ModFlow later. And the full methodology then goes to inverse problem, optimization, uncertainty analysis. But this will not be explained today. So today we'll focus mainly on the cast conduit simulator and on the physical uh, simulation, especially with ModFlow. So the, the base of the approach is to approximate the, the physics. So the, the idea is to mimic uh, the fact that water will follow the, the minimum effort pass from the inlets of the system, so the sinkhole, the dolins, toward uh, the spring. But this min minimum effort pass is uh, usually in a geological medium, it's usually very complex because it depends uh, on the one hand on fracturations, so on preferential initial flow paths, and then also on the uh, on other uh, geological constraints. Um, this will, the, so this, this search for the minimum effort path will be, uh, will be done using a fast marching algorithm. Fast marching algorithm is an algorithm that uh, is similar to the, the one that is used in the, in the GPS when you look for uh, shortest roads. So the idea here is to give uh, a map, in this case here uh, I show a 2D map, uh, with different uh, facieses. So in this case we have a, a black facies which will be, for example, the aquifer, so the, the, car, the limestone matrix, and then you have the fractures, in this case the, the, the white facies. And so we, we will inform the fast marching algorithm that there is a higher speed, so uh, it will uh, it will be allowed to go faster in the in the white faces, and so this is more or less a, a speed map. The the distances are known because the grid is regular, and what the and the output of the fast marching algorithm will be uh, a shortest time of arrival map. So uh, what you see here is uh, the time that uh, a worker needs to go from the, the spring, in this case, or the initial point, and it, it propagates this time front along the feature. And as you see, the, the influence of the, the fracture can be felt also uh, at large scale. And what we do is to, to, to look for the shortest path from, for example, a point here, uh, which will be, in the end, it will be, uh, the, we will use the, the inlets coordinates, for example, and say, okay, let's connect the inlets with the spring, and you will just follow, by particle tracking, we, we just follow the, the shortest path. And in this way, we create the first conduits, like you can see here, the first set, and then iteratively, we will use now also these conduits as even more preferential, uh, uh, even more preferential uh, facies, and iteratively we will update also and generate new new conduits like that. And in this way we can obtain um, hierarchical uh, structures, so these uh, sort of trees, which are uh, consistent with the conceptual model of Karst, uh, with all the conduits that uh, that iteratively. Um, yeah, go one and connect one to each other and toward the spring. In 3D, and if you have a look to the overview of the, whole, the algorithm, we will use, first of all, a geological model. We will add heterogeneity in the model with a, a fracture uh, model, in this case a DFN. Then we will go on the field, uh, uh, mapping all the inlet and outlets of the system. Uh, we will then use the outlet, so the, the spring coordinates, as initial time 
as I've shown here before. So we use the spring as initial uh, initial time for the fast marching algorithm, and then compute the time map also in 3D. In 3D, this is for example a, a time map for the, this model of uh, Noreg. You have here the, the spring, and then you see what is uh, in blue here is in form as uh, preferential. So it's uh, very far away. You can also uh, you can still have uh, short times, and then we use the inlets of the system, which have been mapped, for example, here with yellow dots. And iteratively, iteratively we will uh, perform this particle tracking and update the propagation medium, re-compute uh, the time map, and so on, until we simulate all the final network. So this loop here is the main conduit simulation loop, which I've also explained before. The karst uh, realization of this kind of look. So this is for the Noireg uh, example. I will speak uh, a lot about this example uh, in a couple of slides. But this is the kind of uh, realization you can obtain with this algorithm also in 3D. Uh, in 3D, there are a couple of considerations that have to be taken into account. The first one is that in this way, uh, you are not directly able to simulate the, the unsaturated zone. In fact, because this is this is due to the fact that uh, the saturated zone, so the the phreatic zone, and the unsaturated zone, are quite different in mature cast. In the unsaturated one, you have uh, normally more vertical or sub-vertical conduits because the the flow is driven uh, uh, is more driven by gravity. So gravity is the dominant uh, uh, process here. While in the phreatic zone, so in the um, under the water table, you have more uh, uh, it's more the controlled by the, the level of the spring. So you you will have more or less sub horizontal uh, conduits that go from the uh, these collectors of the uh, of the unsaturated zone toward the spring. So we need to treat them separately, and this is done simply by first simulating all the Vados conduits in the first loop. And then, in a second step, we will simulate all the phreatic conduits, to, uh, and this will give us the, the final network. If I do a, this is a cross-section example. So initially, we just simulate all the conduits toward a, a base level. So we say that, the, for example, the, the level of the um, of the spring is this base level, and this this is our uh, zero time for the fast marching. And then, in a second step, we will just Say okay, now it's the the spring, the the, the zero time, and connect all the uh, arrive points of the of the collectors of the Vados zone to other spring. We can also iterate on several uh, le spring levels. If you have uh, in many cars region, you have several spring which can be at uh, different uh, altitude. In this case, you can do it also just using uh, iteratively the algorithms of. First, we will generate, for example, uh, this uh, higher level spring, and then a second one toward another base level. And in this way, you can also simulate the temporary springs. This would be uh, typically this, this kind of, um, of configuration. It is uh, a stochastic approach, as I said. So here, what you see are three equiprobable uh, realization. Um, the inlets points are uh, the same for all the three uh, realization. The only thing that changes is the, the, the fracture model. And as you see, just changing the fracture model three times, you already obtain three different structures. And doing a lot of realization, you can also create um, probability maps, for example, and uh, study also the uncertainty or the probability to have uh, given conduits at given uh, locations. Um, now we'll speak about the, the example of uh, Noir Egg. The, um, this is uh, the m main illustration uh, of, the, of the concept in, in 3D. So the Noir Egg spring is a karstic spring near to Neuchâtel city uh, here uh, in Switzerland. Mm, it has a catchment of about uh, 70 square kilometers. And the, the geology here is quite complex because we are in the Jura Mountains and we have, uh, so here is the, the spring, and we have in, in this catchment we have two major thrusts, so a normal thrust here 
and uh, a back thrust on the other side of the valley. And all the infiltration water that falls in this, in this region here infiltrates in the karstic aquifer and comes out at the Noreg spring. There are a few uh, other small springs, but uh, the, major, the major part of the, the water comes to the, the Noreg spring. So the, the geology uh, has been modeled, first of all, in 3D. As you can see, you have these complex uh, folds and, uh, and thrust. And uh, in blue, you can see the aquifer, so the main cast aquifer that, uh, of the, the Norag uh, Springs. And as you see, uh, one part of the aquifer is also under this uh, tertiary cover here. Uh, so it's quite, geologically, it's quite complex. We have done some mapping of all the inlets. We have used uh, field measurement, but also uh, a digital elevation, a precise digital elevation model to map all the, the inlets of the system uh, in the catchment. And this will be used as inlets for the um, as starting point for the, the karst simulation. So as I've shown just before, you can obtain just using all these, uh, these inlets and the geological information I provide, uh, several uh, realizations that are more or less like that. that show. But then you can also test, for example, uh, here we have an example where you see uh, the influence of the, the different um, the different uh, thrust. So if we if we uh, guess that only, for example, only the the south uh, southeastern uh, thrust have an influence over the the karst uh, genesis, so it may be a preferential flow path so karstified. You will generate model you including this information, and as you can see. The, the main conduits will follow also this uh, this feature, but in other, another case you can say uh, that maybe also the uh, the other one can be a preferential flow path. So you want also the, the conduits to be influenced by this part here, and so the, you can model it just adding also this one. And the, in the second realization, you see that you have one part of the conduit that go that uses let's say the the, fur, the normal thrust here and the other one that uses the, the back thrust here also. Um, so you can easily uh, test different hypotheses also on the geological uh, constraints, so on the different geological hypotheses. Uh, you can also use uh, the model without the thrust and see what, uh, what happens. Um, and then, after you have modeled your, uh, your aquifer and your conduits, you can import them directly into Visual ModFlow using the, the simple ModFlow files. So what you see here with a uh, vertical exaggeration is always the same, uh, the same model. Here we have uh, we show the, the ModFlow property zones. Uh, in this case, only the active cells of the model are shown. So you see, in uh, actually this is wrong. In uh, in blue you see the the aquifer. Um, in in Green here, you see the, the aquitard formation, and in red, the, the conduit. So just pay attention because the, the legend here is just, uh, just inverted. And if we look only at the conduits, important into visual mode, so you can recognize more or less the, the realization. Uh, in fact, now we, use, we, we will use a equivalent porous medium approach, so we say that the cells that contains conduit will will be used as um, as an equivalent porous medium, but then uh, it's up to use to the user to to compute the the, um, the exact flow properties. For example, the hydraulic conductivity. Um, what I usually do with this approach is to use a, a Poiseuille law to compute the the equivalent uh, conductivity, but uh, you can choose. Um, maybe uh, when it will be uh, available, the new ModFlow USGS will be probably be better and more suitable for this kind of uh, approach. This is an open discussion. If you if you look at a 2D map projection of the grid, the ModFlow grid and the and the conduits, it looks uh, something like that, visual ModFlow. And um, 
And the final thing that uh, will be the output from the from the SKS is also a recharge model. So, so a recharge zone. In this case, it will be useful uh, to be able uh, of um, applying different recharge on the different zone. For example, on the aquitard and on the aquifer, uh, you 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 don't you don't need to to put the same recharge because the, uh, in the aquifer you, you you normally you can infiltrate more uh, more water, and also to to simulate the the role of epicard so the the layer the karstic layer that usually drains the surface water into the inlets of the karstic system you can directly infiltrate the water directly into the sinkholes so what i i use normally in my phd is to uh, is to use a um, one proportion of the total water that should be uh, um, infiltrated directly into the into the, um, the inlets and usually even more than 70 percent but this is uh, this is uh, just an indicative value so now we are going more or less to the end so what are the the input file required from SKS well first of all you need a geological model and uh, also the which can include uh, as I showed with the first and the Norag example also the, the faults it can be uh, given separately. Uh, you need to have uh, mapped uh, the, all the inlets of the system and also the outlet. And uh, possibly also to have a, a limit of the catchment, so you will constrain the, the model only to the, to the catchment of the, the spring. And then there is a one option file which will control all the, the behavior of the, the simulator. And the output will will be First of all, visual, visualization file. In this case, I use the open VTK uh, ASCII format. But you can also have the old mod flow file that can be used and directly imported into visual mod flow or also other uh, mod flow GUI. Uh, also, some input file for a, for a other uh, finite element solver, and in this case, the, the one of the, the University of Neuchâtel, and other ASCII file for, with mesh and flow classes. Uh, in the perspective, I will just show this small example. Uh, this is a test that we have made with uh, Cécile Vieux-Mier, uh, uh, who was a master student here last year. And uh, we used uh, a aerial electromagnetic uh, uh, geophysical measurement in the Yucatan region in Mexico. And as you can see, uh, in this case, because the, the conduits are very, very big, uh, more or less more than 10 meters of, uh, of radius, so huge conduits filled with uh, salt water, you can really guess the, the position of the conduits with the, the negative anomalies of the electromagnetic signal. And what we have done was to try to use the already mapped caves. So these are, have been these all these black caves here have been mapped by divers, and uh, we wanted to to use the, the the geophysics to guide the the casualization and uh, what we obtain, we obtained was uh, you generating a, a thousand of uh, realization we obtained this kind of uh, uh, occurrence probability maps where you see in white the already mapped uh, conduit but also you will have uh, the probability map of having uh, conduits in other parts of the region and this is an ongoing research now. We, we have uh, three PhD students uh, actually on, on the field in, in the Yucatan, but it's uh, a very interesting uh, future, uh, future application of the, of the code also. So to conclude, the, the, highlights, the highlights of this uh, methodology is first of all the geological consistency. So the, the idea that you can integrate all the, uh, a lot of field data and, uh, and into the model, um, which normally wasn't possible. You can also constrain several spring and inlets to be connected, uh, and, other, and this is, was not possible with uh, other um, cars generated that were uh, developed until now. It's uh, then the generated uh, conduit system, and also the model can be used for physical simulation, for example, with Modflow, but also with other solvers. And you can generate very easily 
multiple realization, and this is very useful to, to test several hypotheses, uh, like I showed for uh, shortly with the example of Noireg. There are a few drawbacks. The first one is that it is a, a prototype, so it needs also it still need uh, to be tested in more applications, and um, and for specific use, it may need to, to, to modify again the, the code. For the moment, it's a research code, so it may be may need to be, to be a little bit modified for some specific use. And uh, it, the user friendliness is uh, is quite relative. Uh, there is not a, a, a an interface, but there is a, an option file which is quite uh, quite understandable. So it's uh, it's uh, more or less user friendly also. So uh, I thank you, everybody, for your attention. If you need more information, just have a look at the, the blog site of uh, Schlumberger or uh, write an email to Schlumberger Info. And here you have a, a list of the cited references in the, in the presentation. I guess there is time, there are time for questions now. Wayne? Yes, thank you, Andrea. Um, if anyone has any questions, feel free to use the chat option in uh, WebEx. Um, if you have a specific question, I can unmute your microphone, but quite often we get some feedback, so I'll give that a try. And again, uh, for those that missed the uh, beginning, uh, we'll make a recording available on the website in the next couple of days. One thing that uh, I'm not sure if Andrea mentioned, the code that he developed is in MATLAB, um, and we're open to your uh, input or suggestions on how you think this could be used for your specific project needs, whether it be as inputs for mod flow uh, models or finite element models. So certainly feel free to get in touch with us uh, through the contact info shown on the screen. Uh, here's a question that's coming in, Andrea. Um, can we incorporate tracer test results uh, into the modeling uh, approach? Mm, actually, uh, yeah, this is a good, a good question. The, the, um, you can include, in fact, the the, uh, the tracer tests in the um, in the physics simulation, but th this is up to you. So if you use uh, uh, a particular solver that allows you also to, to perform transport simulation, then yes, you can you can you can test. And this actually this is one one part of my PhD on which I spent uh, 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 yeah more than yeah more than one one and a half year. And it was to simulate the, um, the con first simulate the conduits, and then um, and then simulate the the flow and transport, as I was showing at the at all at the, at the beginning. So the idea was uh, in my approach was to generate multiple realization of conduits, perform the physical simulation, which included uh, tracer test, so uh, flow and transport. And then optimize all uh, flow field. So every for each car's realization, I used to uh, to optimize.